we're asked to find the limit of this function as x approaches negative 6. Typically, the most efficient way to find a limit is to use direct substitution. If we try to use direct substitution for this problem, we would get 36 plus 18 minus 54 in the numerator. So that would be 0 in the numerator. And then in the, in the denominator, we would get 36 minus 54 plus 18, which is 0. This would give us an answer of 0 over 0, but this is not the actual answer. This is what is called indeterminate form. Indeterminate form is 0 over 0, or it can look like plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. If you get an answer that has indeterminate form, the answer is not 0 over 0, and the answer is typically not does not exist. So you need to do a little bit of further analysis and do one of three things. Factor and cancel out common factors, rationalize or simplify, or use trigonometric identities. Let's go back to our original example and try factoring. It looks like we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. So we can cancel out x plus 6. This means that there is a whole at x equals negative 6. And that's why we were getting a weird answer, the indeterminate form, when we tried to directly plug in negative 6 without reducing first. Once we have reduced, we get the limit as x approaches negative 6 of x minus 9 over x plus 3. And then we can directly plug in negative 6 as our x value. So this becomes negative 6 minus 9 over negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 15 over negative 3, or 5. So that is our actual limit as x approaches negative 6. It is not 0 over 0, and it is not does not exist. The limit does exist, and it's 5. Let's try some more examples of factoring. If we were to use direct substitution in this example without factoring, we would get a denominator of negative 5 plus 5, or 0, which would mean it would be something like 0 over 0 or does not exist. But that is indeterminate form, which means that we need to do further analysis and factor this one. So this will become x plus 5 times x minus 2 over x plus 5. Now we have a common factor. The common factor is x plus 5. We'll cancel. This becomes the limit as x approaches negative 5 of x minus 2. And now we can use direct substitution. The limit of this function is negative 7. To factor this example, we'll need to use the difference of cubes. Recall that the difference of cubes states that a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b multiplied by a squared plus ab plus b squared. So with a being x and b being 1 in this example, our numerator will factor into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And our denominator is x minus 1. Um, now we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. That common factor is x minus 1. We can cancel. This becomes the limit as x approaches 1 of the function x squared plus x plus 1. And now we can use direct substitution plugging in x equal to 1. 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Another method we can use to simplify if we get indeterminate form is rationalizing, also known as multiplying by the conjugate. In this example, our conjugate will be the square root of x plus 4 plus 3. So we'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by this conjugate. And when you multiply by a conjugate, you're typically going to want to keep the factors on the top in factored form. You don't need to FOIL or distribute any of the numbers up here. It's going to stay as the limit of x approaches 5. Numerator will stay as x minus 5 times rad x plus 4 plus 3. No need to distribute. And the denominator will become x plus 4 
minus 9. Then if we simplify the denominator, and note that I'm keeping the limit notation at the beginning, you have to keep the limit notation on at the beginning until you physically substitute in the number. So until I plug in the 5, the limit notation stays. So now this is x, x minus 5 times rad x plus 4 plus 3 all over x minus 5. I see a common factor here. Now I have the limit as x approaches 5 of rad x plus 4 plus 3. And at this point, I can use direct substitution. Rad 5 plus 4 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. In the next example, I'm going to multiply by a conjugate again. But this time, the conjugate is going to be the square root of x plus 6 plus 3. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by that value. And then I'm going to multiply these, but I'm going to keep the, de keep the denominator in factored form. Leaving it as x minus 3 times rad x plus 6 plus 3. I have x minus 3 in the numerator, and I have another x minus 3 in the denominator. So this will be a situation where we can cancel out a common factor. Cancel out the x minus 3. Now we are left with the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over rad x plus 6 plus 3. Now I can use direct substitution. 1 over rad 3 plus 6 plus 3, which is 1 sixth. This last example on this page is slightly different in that I'm not going to rationalize, but I am going to have to simplify. My goal is to get this numerator into one large term. Right now, it's two separate terms with two separate denominators. If I want to add fractions, I have to get these to a common denominator. So I'm going to change this to the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 over 4 times x minus 4. I'm just rewriting negative 4 plus x as x minus 4 because I prefer to have the variable first. Plus x minus 4 over 4 times x minus 4. I've gotten this to the point where I now have a common denominator, but then I, I have my overall denominator here, which is x. And then I'm going to further simplify. Limit as x approaches 0. So my new numerator of the numerator is 4 plus x minus 4. My new denominator of the numerator is 4 times x minus 4, and that is all over x. And since, it's, since I have a positive 4 and a negative 4 here, those are going to cancel. My numerator of the numerator is really just x. And then continuing to simplify, now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm trying to divide these two fractions. This is really x over 1. Um, but what I'm going to do, I have x over 4 times x minus 4. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1 over x multiplying by the reciprocal in order to divide the fractions. These cross cancel, and I'm left with the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over 4 times x minus 4. Now I can use direct substitution, 1 over 4 times negative 4, or 1 over negative 16. Negative 1 16th is my answer. Another method for simplifying is using trigonometric identities. These are the trig identities that we will work with on this page, and it's going to be very helpful if you memorize this first sine one, this first cosine one, and the first tangent one. So my goal is to get this function to a point where I have the same, the same thing inside the sine parentheses as I do in the denominator. Because what I'm looking to get, I want, I want to get sine of a number over that same number, so that I can make that equal to 1 and make it a little bit simpler. So right now I have sine of 6x over 3x. 
I need sine of 6x over 6x if I'm going to simplify. So what I'm going to do is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. And that will get me the limit of the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 sine of 6x over 6x. At this point, I'm going to use the multiplication property for simplifying limits and split this into two separate limits. I'm going to split this into the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 6x over 6x. Using this first sine property here, or using the first trigonometric identity there, um, I can simplify this. I know limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 6x over 6x is really just 1. So this turns into a 1. And then the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 is 2. So when I go to evaluate my limit, I have 2 times 1, which is really just 2. In the second example, I'm again trying to get tan of a number over that same number so that I can simplify it into 1. Because it is limit as x goes to 0, it's important to note that you can only use these identities when x is approaching 0. And in this case, it is. So I'm going to split it into two separate limits. I'm going to split it into the limit as x goes to 0 of 2 ninths times the limit as x goes to 0 of tan x over x. I know that tan x over x, when we're finding the limit as x goes to 0, is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. And I know that the limit as x goes to 0 of 2 ninths is just 2 ninths. So then I evaluate 2 ninths times 1, which is 2 ninths. And that's my limit. Here are some more useful trigonometric identities that you can use when you're simplifying limits or trying to get out of indeterminate form. First one is sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. We also have 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x. Tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And the double angle identity, sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine x times cosine x. So let's work through an example using one of these. Um, we have the limit of this function as x approaches 0. Um, I like it when I see x approaching 0 because that means that I can use these identities from the previous page. I can use these, I can use these facts because these, these only work when x is approaching 0. So I like that x is approaching 0 here. My approach for this problem is going to be to factor out a cosine, a cosine x out of the top out of the numerator. So I'm going to simplify this into limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x times cosine x plus 1. There should be a negative sign in front of there because it was originally negative cosine squared x. And that's all over x. Now I'm going to change this around so that I can match one of the identities up here. I'm trying to use this identity. Limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0. So I'm going to try to get 1 minus cosine x. I'm going to try to get this into 1 minus cosine x. And that's pretty easy to do. I just have to flip it around. So this becomes limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x, parentheses, 1 minus cosine x, all over x. Now I'm going to split it into two separate limits. I have limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x, and that's multiplied by the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. I know that this is equal to 0, so this is going to be times 0. And then if I plug, if I'm, now I can use direct substitu substitution, I'm going to plug in x equals 0 into this equation. The cosine of 0 is 1, so I have 1 times 0, which is 0, and that is the limit of this function. And I want to point out that the reason that we have to do all this simplifying is because if you just go and try to plug in x equaling 0 using direct substitution um, right away, you're going to get something divided by 0. 
and that would be undefined. But if we look at what our actual limit for this one is, our actual limit is zero. It's not undefined and it's, it's, it's not does not exist. So that's why we have to dig a little bit deeper and do some more analysis to see if we can get an answer that is not indeterminate form or that is not does not exist. Okay, for this next example, I'm going to try using direct substitution right away just to see what happens. So in the numerator, I would plug in pi over 4, tan pi over 4 is 1, so I would have 1 minus 1 in the numerator. That is 0. In the denominator, sine pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2, cosine pi over 4 is also rad 2 over 2, so I would have rad 2 over 2 minus rad 2 over 2, which is also 0. So if I just use direct substitution right away without doing any simplifying or rearranging, I'm going to get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form. Indeterminate form is not the answer. We have to do a little bit more analysis here. And in that case, it's going to look like first splitting tangent into sine over cosine. Pretty much any time you see tangent in one of these problems, it's going to be beneficial to split it into sine over cosine because those are a bit easier to work with. So... I'm going to rewrite this as limit as x goes to pi over 4 of 1 minus sine x over cosine x all over sine x minus cosine x. And then I'm going to try to combine this numerator into one term instead of 1 and sine x over cosine x. I'm going to make the 1 into a cosine x minus cosine, sorry, a cosine x over cosine x. This is going to help it have the same denominator as the second term. And that's all over sine x minus cosine x. So now I have the limit as x goes to pi over 4 of cosine x minus sine x all over cosine x over sine x minus cosine x. And now I'm going to do some fraction division, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Limit as x goes to pi over 4 of cosine x minus sine x over cosine x times 1 over sine x minus cosine x. Now this term, well it's not one term, this numerator and this denominator look pretty similar. I'm gonna see if I can get them to be exactly the same so that I can cross cancel. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to change, I'm going to change this one to negative cosine x minus sine x, just like this. I'm also combining it into one fraction. And this is where I'm gonna do the changing. This becomes negative one pulling out a negative one out of here and then flipping the two terms, cosine x minus sine x. Sorry, it's getting very squished at the edge of the paper, but I do have a common factor now. I have cosine x minus sine x over cosine x minus sine x. I can cancel those. Now my limit as x approaches pi over four, I'm evaluating the limit of one over negative cosine x. Let's see if I can use direct substitution and get a valid answer now. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so I have 1 over negative root 2 over 2. That is equal to negative 2 over root 2, and since we don't want to leave a radical in the, denom in the denominator, I'm going to rationalize, multiply both by rad 2, and I get negative 2 rad 2 over 2, which is the same thing as negative rad 2. That is the limit of this function.